Hey everybody, Home Slice Center here, and in today's video, I'm going to be showcasing an insane run that I had during my last five sets in the Go Battle League. After hitting Expert with the Grimer team, I ended up switching to a different team and went on a crazy 18-7 run, gaining about 170 ELO to end up at 29-23 ELO, which at the time of recording was number 23 in the world on the global leaderboards. I built this team to try and set up Araquanid for success, as it has some interesting meta wins against Pokemon like Malamar, Feraligator, and the Mudslappers. So without further ado, let's hop into the matches, and we pick up a slightly positive lead in the first match, Dunsparce versus Toxapex. I have a much stronger response in the back with the Kanto Marowak, but I'm very happy to stay in here and play this out. I get to fire off the drill run and outpace. That is going to land upon a safe switches into Diggersby. And this is another meta matchup where the Araquanid can absolutely shred. Araquanid does great into Diggersby because basically every Diggersby is now running Fire Punch plus Scorching Sands. And that means without Hyper Beam, they have a very poor matchup against the Araquanid. Here, I am going to farm up to bluff a potential Water Pulse, as Water Pulse would hit for a ton of damage and the bait actually works. My opponent does end up committing a shield. That works out terrific for me, because they're debuffed, they used a shield on a move that would basically do no damage, they switch into the Toxapex to try and snipe with a Sludge Wave, but I say no, I'm catching that Sludge Wave on the Marowak, I'm gonna go for a full farm down, opponent sees the writing on the wall, and concedes the match. Dream lead in the next match, Dunsparce versus Talonflame opponent is going to save switch into Feraligator. I bank a ton of energy on the Dunsparce and I bring in Araquanid. Araquanid is a full wall to the energy from Feraligator. Hydro Cannon, Ice Beam, both going to be resisted since Crunch is basically missing in action this season. They're going to fire off Hydro after Hydro. I do get to a pace here and make the Bug Buzz before they're able to get to a third move. The Bug Buzz is going to be shielded. Because they correctly shielded the nuke, my opponent is going to be able to get two Hydros before I can farm down. So I don't want to shield. I'm just going to give up Switch because I have Shadow Canto Marowak. And as long as I'm up two Mud Slaps, I'm going to have a pacing advantage over this Talonflame. In comes the Talonflame. It is an Incinerate Talonflame, but the animations are still messed up. I get to fire off the Rock Slide. Rock Slide gets the shield. In the back is Azumarill. I rebank the Rock Slide, send in the Dunsparce, and from here this game is just over. Dunsparce does have a pretty favorable matchup into Azumarill, and the Mud Slaps that I got from the Kanto Marowak make my job here so much easier. They go for the play rough, and judging off that damage, I can survive the next few bubbles and another play rough, so there's just no way for my opponent to win this game at this point. The drill run is going to land, it's charged attack priority, I know that I can survive this, and then I'm just going to throw the rock slide, because even if they switch, which they do, the rock slide covers for that outcome. So they switch into the talon flame, rock slide KOs, I can combo play with the Shadow Kanto Marowak, Bone Club will be enough to knock out the Azumarill, and we're able to take that win. Hopping into the next match, leading Dunsparce against Licky Licky. I do have a better response to this in the back, again, with the Shadow Canto Marowak, but I'm fine playing this out with the Dunsparce. It's one of the reasons why Dunsparce is so strong, is it's just so neutral into everything. Even if you have a stronger answer in the back, you can play this matchup out, and this matchup is going to favor Dunsparce, because non-stab Drill Run is going to be a better move than Licky Licky spamming out Stab Body Slam, because Body Slam is just a very poor move now. So I get to fire off Drill Run after Drill Run in this matchup, and I'm very happy no shielding. My opponent will go for the body slam. I'm going to go for a rock slide covering for a potential switch out and a catch. So I do cover for that. They don't end up switching, however. They're going to bring in a non-shadow Kanto Marowak. And that's a bit unfortunate because if they had the shadow, they would probably be running it. I land the drill run and I'm going to pivot out into my own Kanto Marowak. I'm going to farm up quite a bit of energy. Opponent is at over two bone clubs here, which makes this a little awkward. I can't really wait a turn because if they throw, then I just miss a mud slap. So I farm all the way up to two and I win charge attack priority. That's a little bit of good luck for me. Now I have a choice to make. Do I decide to shield? I say yes. I'm just going to go for the shield and the farm down, exit with energy, because this energy can hopefully be threatening versus whatever's in the back, and it's going to be a Toxapex in the back, so this is a terrible matchup for my Araquanid, but I still have the Shadow Kanto Marowak grabbing the final shield with a Bone Club, getting to a Bone Club number two, and that's just too much health missing from this Toxapex, and Toxapex cannot win this endgame. 
Sludge Wave will do a decent amount of damage, but I'm not even in the yellow health yet, and I'm gonna be evil. I'm going for the Bubble Beam. Bubble Beam means a guaranteed win for me, because now there's no hope for my opponent to ever go for a Sludge Wave and a Farm Down, because they just don't have the damage output anymore. Araquanid was already bulky. Adding that, its ability to debuff, and this thing is really annoying to play against. I get to make it to the Bug Buzz. It may be resisted, but it will not matter. Bug Buzz KOs and we're able to take the win. Up into the next match, Dunsparce versus Shadow Dragonair. This is typically not a great lead for the Dunsparce. I think that I'd rather be the Dragonair in this moment. Here, I over farm to avoid a catch. They catch onto a Skarmory. What season is this? Why is there a Skarmory here? Oh no. Oh my goodness, I'm so weak to Skarmory in the back. This is not great for me. Skarmory farming up a ton of energy. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure what the new Skarmory counts are, because obviously Sky Attack was nerfed. I know Steel Wing was nerfed as well, but I believe it was the damage on Steel Wing that was nerfed rather than the energy. But I'm just gonna bring in the Marowak. I get the farm down, they don't get another move, which is great for me. And now, what are they gonna be sending in here? Will it be the Dragonair? Yes, Dragonair did have a bunch of stored energy and they're going to fire it off here. I'm gonna shield the Aqua Tail. I know that if I want to, I can double shield and farm down, but I don't wanna give up my final shield without getting their shield first. They will use a shield and now I'm very happy to give up mine because I can Mud Slab farm down from here. So I should hopefully be in a pretty decent spot. In the back, it is Cresselia. And that is a pretty nice spot for Araquanid to be in. Cresselia, Moonblast, Grass Knot, not going to do a lot. They're actually running Fusion Sight, but Fusion Sight not going to do a ton either. Here, this is a bit of an uncomfortable situation. I'm intentionally going for a Bubble Beam. Whether it's shielded or not, I should be in an okay spot. The No Shield makes sense because my opponent, their win con is for me to KO their Cresselia quickly, get a bunch of farm on the Dragonair, and be able to make a move versus my Marowak. But since I stalled the clock with a Bubble Beam and then through the Bug Buzz, I can switch instantly. They don't get the energy lead. I farm down and I'm able to take the win. Hopping into the next match, Dunsparce versus Mandibuzz. This is a very good lead for the Dunsparce. Opponent is going to save switch into a Shadow Drapion, and in comes the Shadow Canto Marowak. Opponent overforms quite a bit, so I get to force the first shield of the match. One nice thing is I live any one move. Shadow Canto Marowak does have some pretty decent bulk, so I can let this go. It is going to be the Crunch. They get the defense drop, and I will commit a shield. The defense drop does mean that they're going to get less snarl damage on the Mandibuzz as they farm me down, which is nice, but they're actually running Air Slash. People do run some weird Pokemon and weird movesets towards the top of leaderboards, and Air Slash Mandibuzz definitely qualifies. I'm just going to bring right back in with that Dunsparce. I was worried about a catch, so I'm just going to get as much energy as I can with this Dunsparce. They're actually running Foul Play on the Mandibuzz as well. So again, some very, very interesting movesets and Pokemon here. I'm able to land the Rock Slide, which is great news for me. And I'm just going to go for the Farm Down. I want energy on the Dunsparce in case it's something that my Araquanid cannot handle. And it's a Lantern. So we've seen a Skarmory. We've seen a Lantern. People are breaking out the last season meta up at the top of the leaderboards. But... Lantern's about to learn why it is no longer around as I get to fire off the drill run. Even though they have a spark user against the water type, Araquanid is just much too bulky and the opponent will resign the match. We move to the next match. Okay, pretty decent lead. Dunsparce versus Azumarill. And this is the goal of the Dunsparce lead. Dunsparce covers for the flyers that Araquanid doesn't want to see and Dunsparce also does great against Azumarill. The thought process behind the Shadow Canto Marowak was, as a safe switch, it can potentially lure out flyers, try and fight back with Rock Slide, although its pacing to Rock Slide isn't the greatest, and Rock Slide isn't the greatest move ever either, or potentially bait out an Azumarill, because flying types and Azumarill, not things that Araquanid are a big fan of. Here, if I have a better Dunsparce, I can live this, but I don't have a good Dunsparce, so I'm just forced to bring in the Araquanid. That is a little uncomfortable for me. I'm just gonna tank this and go for a full farm down because I can get a ton of energy on the Araquanid. Play rough, not gonna do a lot. Opponent pivots out here into the Drapion and I should have thrown this Bug Buzz instantly. Giving them an energy advantage is gonna put me in a bit of a tricky spot. I'm gonna farm up, switch and catch. We get the prediction right, catching the crunch onto the Kanto Marowak due to the defense drop. They don't get another move, and I won't find out what they had in the back as they do end up resigning. 
We've got a massive core breaker on the lead in the next match, and its name is Quagsire. Shadow Quagsire, another Pokemon with Mudshot getting reworked. We don't see as commonly, but it does prove to be a pretty decent core breaker because it's very good at shutting down Pokemon like Dunsparce. Dunsparce can win the zeros, but typically Quagsire is just going to use a Protect Shield, massively overfarm, and just exit with a lot of energy. And that energy will be very threatening. So here, now, look at this perfect overfarm. They get so much energy. They have have to Stone Edge to knock out here, but I'm in a bit of a tricky position. Do I bring in the Araquanid or do I bring in the Marowak? I'm going to bring in the Marowak and say that I can farm down. But this is when I found out that I am not too up to date with the new Quagsire counts, as Quagsire is actually able to get another move. So my mental math on the Quagsire counts, at least with the post Mudshot rework was not accurate. They bring in a Zoomerill, and this is just looking like a loss. They're ABA water. Oh my goodness. If they saw a Superior, the game's just instantly over. They have a Tox Effects in the back. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't win that game. So I will concede the match. We move to the next match. Very positive lead. Dunsparce Shadow Jump Pluff. Jump Pluff is going to throw one Fairy Wind save switch into the Kanto Marowak. Here, the correct play is to go into the Araquanid. However, I'm worried about a Gastrodon in the back. I've seen a lot of double mud slap teams where Kanto Marowak is the pivot to try and lure out something so Gastrodon can sweep. And I know that if I get a Raccoon on Gastrodon, the game is just over. So instead, I chip with a Drill Run, I bring in my own Marowak, and I go for a full farm down. Now when they bring in the Shadow Jump Pluff, Rock Slide is gonna hurt. Shadow on Shadow, Rock Slide is a ton of damage. My opponent will actually use the shield. The uncomfortable thing for me is they're gonna get a ton of farm. And Jump Pluff's energy can actually be extremely threatening to the Dunsparce. Look at all that farm I just gave up. That is really not ideal. I bring in the Dunsparce, but I already took Mud Slaps earlier from their Kanto Marowak. Energy Ball connects, and now I'm suddenly in trouble. I'm expecting that after this Aerial Ace, they're going to snipe with the Mud Slapper. So I aggressively switch, and they didn't bring it in. Oh, this is not good. This is not good. I will commit the shield. They will get another Aerial Ace, but I can get a Bubble Beam first. So I'm going to fire off the Bubble Beam. This will apply a debuff. If they want to save energy, they're going to have to switch out. They bank the move in the back. It's for Alligator. So this is not the Pokemon that I was expecting, but it's still a great matchup for the Araquanid. They go for the Hydro Cannon. Araquanid simply does not care, and I will fire off the Bug Buzz. I'm still outside of Aerial Ace range, but not by much. I'm going to farm up, switch... It's a simul KO, and with a Raquinid in the back, I take the win. These final two games are clipped from my stream, so the quality of the clip, you may notice, is quite a bit lower. But these games were incredible, so I did want to include them, regardless if the quality is a bit degraded. So we have a Dunsparce Mirror, and considering I have a Raquinid in the back, very happy to see the Dunsparce here. We are going to trade drill runs. My opponent not throwing what I throw. So whoever wins charge attack priority, still very much not known. My opponent is going to bring in for alligator. I'm going to bank quite a bit of energy on the Dunspars and bring in Araquanid. Araquanid is going to do great in the for alligator. Giving them an energy lead is not something that I'm too worried about personally, just due to the fact that I can absorb these hydro cannons and still make the bug buzz as long as I sh switch in a decent amount of time. So I'm going to farm up, fire off the bug buzz right before they get their move. Bug buzz is going to pick up the knockout. Opponent is going to bring in the Dunsparce. Dunsparce firing off energy. And now I just get to bring in the Shadow Canto Marowak and look for the farm down. So things are feeling pretty good for me, but I still don't know what their third Pokemon is. So I'm going to bring in the Marowak and Disaster Strikes. Oh no, it's Superior. And I think I have lost. My opponent baited out the bug type and Superior completely destroys Dunsparce and it destroys Kanto Marowak. This game looks doomed. I commit the shield. It's going to be a frenzy plant and this is not looking good whatsoever. I'm now approaching a range where they can even go for an Aerial Ace. My opponent does not throw. They're looking to maximize on energy. They'll either do one Vine Whip in the move or four. I throw two, wait the turn, catch and sneak, and now maybe there's a chance. We catch the Aerial Ace. They're gonna make it to the Frenzy Plant. I will use the shield. Dunsparce does have energy for my opponent. Superior is gonna defer the Mud Slap onto the Dunsparce, and Dunsparce will go for the Drill Run, but Drill Run won't KO. I can survive it. I have the back-to-back -back Bone Clubs loaded. 
And I can live the fast move that sneaks through. But I didn't see one sneak through. They shouldn't have a move yet. It looks like they did actually get denied, which is really unfortunate to see. The good news is that I would have lived the vine whip that snuck anyway. But man, that's really not what you want to see. And hopping into the final match, going up against the 2023 Pokemon Go World Champion, it's Axon. And I pick up a terrible lead Dunsparce into Malamar. I save switch into the Shadow Kanto Marowak. And I know shield because most Malamars are paired with Azumarill. But that is not an Azumarill. That is going to be a Diggersby. My opponent already so weak to my Araquanid. But unfortunately, I haven't been able to align the Araquanid onto either of those two Pokemon. I fire off the Bone Club. That's going to be no shielded. Can I get another one? I cannot. The quick attack damage registers. And I don't get the move. That's really, really rough. This Diggersby has so much energy. I just have to absorb this energy on the Dunsparce. I'm not going to get a lot of value out of Dunsparce versus the Malamar. I just have to two-shield Araquanid and hope. I'm going to throw three and the move. My opponent gets the Fire Punch. That's not going to knock out. And I just have to get ahead on energy with Araquanid. In comes Araquanid in the back. Is for Alligator. Oh my goodness. We lost lead and we lost swap. But in this end game, my opponent is core broken by the Araquanid. I'm going to shield up the first move. I build up to the bug buzz and I bait. This is a risky bait, but I have to preserve health and it pays off. I do get the shield. That is incredibly important. And now I can survive two more Hydro Cannons very comfortably and I have to try and commit to a farm down. My opponent tries to go for charge attack priority there. Hydro Cannon to the Bug Buzz, but I'm not going to fall for it. I need to get this farm down. I need this energy for the Malamar. Opponent, do they send in the Malamar? Yes, and I'm going to bait. After they see the bait, if they shield this, they're going to try and catch. So I blind switch into the Dunsparce, predicting their switch out, and I get it right. Drill Run KOs the Diggersby. In comes the Malamar. Can I make it to the Bug Buzz? And the answer is yes. 1 HP on the Araquanid. We hang on to KO with the Bug Buzz and win a game that felt doomed pretty much throughout the entirety of the match. All in all, I had a lot of fun with this team. I do think Araquanid has some pretty solid play into the current meta. I do think this team's success was a bit of a flash in the pan, if you will, or for the sports fans watching, a Linsanity run, where honestly, I didn't put a tremendous amount of thought into the team. I just wanted to run a Raquanid, and I even, the first three sets that I did were live on stream, and I asked my chat, what should I lead? This is what I need to cover, and they said, oh, just use Dunsparce. And then the team ended up performing amazingly. So this is not necessarily a team that I would recommend others try when it comes to gaining ELO, but... Even if that's not the case, I still did want to document the fact that this was a pretty incredible run and I'm definitely due some regression to the mean. So I'm not expecting to hit legend within the next couple days. I am expecting there's going to be some regression and some tough matchups headed my way. But overall, I'm thrilled with the fact that I was able to get up to number 23 in the world as I've now been able to make it to page one on the leaderboards, top 50 in the world, in Ultra League, and now Great League in this new Max Out meta. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The support guys provide is sincerely appreciated. So thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.